Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a green-white plus one counter synergy deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And the deck features a few new cards from Strixhaven, and one of those is Sparring Regimen, a three mana rare enchantment that when it enters a battlefield lets us learn, meaning we can grab a lesson card out of our sideboard and put it into our hand, or we can discard a card and then draw a card, and we'll take a look at our sideboard in just a second. And then whenever we attack, we can put a plus one plus one counter on target attacking creature and untap it. So this gives us a steady stream of plus one plus one counters, which will synergize with the rest of the deck, and untapping a creature helps us play defense and also synergizes nicely with Swarm Shambler which can potentially attack and then still untap to then activate its ability to tap and put another plus one counter on it. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck at one mana, we've got our full play set of Star Pupil, another addition from Strixhaven, a 0-0 creature that enters a battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it, and when a pupil dies, put its counters on target creature we control, so if it accumulates more plus one counters from other sources, like for example Sparring Regimen, then we still get to move all those counters onto another creature. And then we have our full playset of Swarm Shambler, also a 0-0 that enters a battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it, and whenever a creature we control with a plus one counter on it becomes the target of a spell an opponent controls, then we get to make a 1-1 a green insect creature token, and for one mana we can tap Swarm Shambler to put a plus one plus one counter on it, and then we can potentially play Stone Coil Serpent for one mana, the 0-0 artifact creature snake with a reach, trample and protection from multicolored enters a battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it, and compared to our previous previous green-white plus one counter deck in standard, this version's a lot more aggressive, so we do want to make sure we can curve out as much as possible. And then at one mana we also have the full playset of Blizzard Brawl as our removal spell of choice, the snow sorcery is supported by our 10 snow covered basics in the mana base, and Blizzard Brawl is a fight spell that lets us choose a creature we control, and a creature we don't control if we have 3 or more snow permanents, the creature we control gets plus 1 plus 1 and gains indestructible until end of turn, and then those two creatures fight. So of course ideally we have our 3 snow lands in play to enable Blizzard Brawl, so our creature will always win the fight, and the reason we're playing this over Inscription which also has a bit of synergy with those plus one counters is just a pure mana efficiency. We want to keep the deck nice and low curve, so one mana removal spell is much preferred over a two mana one. Then at two mana we've got a full play set of Conclave Mentor as another one of the centerpieces of the deck, a 2-2 Centaur Cleric saying if one or more plus one counters would be put on a creature we control, that many counters plus one are put on that creature instead. And a lot of the effects in this deck add counters in increments of one, meaning that the Conclave Mentor essentially doubles the number of plus one plus one counters placed on our creatures, which is incredibly impactful, and when the Conclave Mentor dies we also gain life equal to its power. Then we've got the full set of Illuminarch Aspirant, a great in any white aggressive deck, and especially synergistic here, as a 2 mana 1-1 one, one human cleric, saying at the beginning of combat on our turn, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature we control. And then Wildwood Scourge, we're often going to run out on turn 2 for X equals 1, enters the battlefield with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, and whenever 1 or more plus 1 counters are put on another non-Hydra creature we control, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Wildwood Scourge, so this can also quickly get out of hand. Then at 3 mana we've got our full set of Sparring Regimen, and then taking a look at our sideboard here we've got a lot of lessons to potentially learn from, including Academic Probation, which can potentially take an opposing non-land permanent out of commission for a turn cycle, or we can prevent the opponent from casting it in the first place. Then we've got Environmental Sciences to help hit our land drop, Reduced to Memory can take out a non-land permanent and replace it with a 3-2 token, Expanded Anatomy puts 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on target creature and it also gains a Vigilance until end of turn, so also has a bit of synergy in our deck. Containment Breach can answer artifacts or enchantments. Basic Conjuration helps us find more creatures and gains a bit of life. And then Mascot Exhibition, a nice curve topper if we have access to 7 mana to generate 3 creatures. Then we have the full set of Orn Reef Ooze, a 3 mana 2-2 two -two that when it enters the battlefield puts a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature we control, and when the Ooze attacks put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each attacking creature with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. Also great with our Sparring Regimen, since we can make sure that the Regimen places a counter on our creature before the Orn Reef Ooze trigger resolves, meaning we can potentially put a ton of counters on a creature that didn't have any counters to begin with. And then finally two copies of the Great Henge, the 9 mana legendary artifact costs X mana less to cast, where X is the greatest power among creatures we control, it taps for double green and gains two life, and whenever a non-token creature enters a battlefield under our control, we can put a plus one plus one counter on it and draw a card. So very synergistic in the deck and provides a steady stream of card advantage in the grindier matchups. 
Author creatures worth considering. Scavenging Ooze, of course, a nice bit of graveyard hate that also synergizes with plus one counters. We could play Gnarled Colony to give our creatures Trample, especially useful against the Blank Green Pest decks that usually trying to chum block their way out of it. And then we could also consider something like a Basri's Lieutenant if we're facing sweeper effects that would otherwise destroy our entire board. And then the mana base, we mentioned 20 snow-covered basics with 10 snow-covered plains and 10 snow-covered forests, and then 4 of the green-white pathway. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. No one drop to start our curve with, but Mentor plus Aspirant is a deadly duo. Facing a Lurus deck with clever Lumamancer. And picked up a Wildwood Scourge. Still probably going to lead with either Aspirant or Mentor. We do have double green, so that's not an issue for holding the Mentor potentially. So I guess we'll just play Aspirant for now. And then next turn maybe go Mentor plus Blizzard Brawl. Clarion Spirit, definitely something we want to take out. And hit for 5. And that's also making it easier to play Great Henge, which we could already play next turn if we wait until our second main phase. Just a tapped Kabira takedown. And our opponent passes. So I'm tempted to move to combats so we can play Great Henge and then play Scourge afterwards. If I play Aspirants, let's say the Mentor survives, I can essentially put four counters on this, so I can play this for two mana. Yeah, I guess it works. And then I don't even have to attack if we fear any interaction here. Although, I don't imagine they can have much to kill an 8-8. Opponent takes it, play a 2 mana Henge, and a 1 mana Scourge, which is not going to stay 1-1 one, one for very long. Alright, Shock takes out Mentor. They waited on that for a while, maybe trying to ambush one of our creatures. Still going to run out Scourge here. Well, not a bad. Turn 4, all things considered, and Sparring Regimen should be able to close out the game for us. Yeah, waiting on the shock was maybe a little greedy. But we'll see what happens. It's going to be Claim the Firstborn. Alright, I see, so they wanted to let us make a big Aspirin to then steal it afterwards. We're at 24, so we can take it. Show of confidence to spread out some counters. Still at 7, so we're fine. And our opponent's more than dead on the way back. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Pupil into Aspirant, into either Ooze or Regimen. Let's see what we're up against. Blank Green. And an Eye Twitch, so this is the Pest Sacrifice deck. So this would have been a matchup where Gnarled Colony would have been quite useful. Stone Coil still quite synergistic too here, and thanks to Trample can trample over some 1-1 one -one tokens. But this is going to be a tough matchup, and we're going to rely on some of our sideboard cards to potentially uh, win the matchup. Alright, they've got a lamp pad as a sacrifice outlet. So I think we lead with Ooze and then Regimen next turn. And then Ooze doesn't have to put the counter on itself. We'll just put it on... Let's see... 
I guess, just pile it onto the pupil for now. And then next turn Aspirant can put on itself, and Regimen can put on the Ooze, and then everyone will have a counter to go with the Ooze. And this way I don't mind as much if they kill my pupil. And then we can wait on playing a big stone coil. There's a Bastion, which we can maybe destroy after grabbing our disenchant. Another sparring regimen. Alright. So we'll play regimen. And then learn our containment breach, I believe. Move to combats. Then Aspirin gets a counter. Attack, and then we do want to make sure to trigger these in the correct order, so Regimen resolves first and then Ooze. And there we go. We've got a 5-5, five, five, a 3-3 three, three, and a 4-4. Four, four. They could triple block my Aspirin, but that's fine by me. And then I could consider playing a 1-1 Stone Coil, since it's not going to stay a 1-1 for very long. Yeah, especially now that we picked up some more 3-mana plays, I might not have time to play a large Stone Coil. So we're going to run it out as a 1-1. Opponent learned a Pest Summoning to make two 1-1s. One village rides to draw two. Containment Breach can also destroy the Lampad, which is an enchantment creature. And our opponent concedes. Alright, so we had a fast enough start to overwhelm the opponent before they could set up all their engines. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand, especially if we can find a third land here. Pupil into Scourge into Ooze. Scourge doesn't synergize all that well with itself since it mentions non-Hydra creatures. So a Scourge wouldn't be able to enable a second one. Alright, Aspirant is tempting. We'll maybe start with that. Turn to Fiend Artisan. And picked up a Stone Coil, so we'll play Scourge. That way it'll pick up a counter from Aspirant. And Aspirant probably puts counter on itself, so we can hit for four. Ghost Riders, their opponent on a Sacrifice deck here. Third lane, so we get to play Ooze. And where do we want to put our counters? I could go with Ooze, counter on... Let's say Pupil. Which will also trigger the Scourge. And then Aspirant could put counter on... Let's say the pupil again, and then we'll have two four fours, and then Aspirin stays back, and then maybe next turn we can use Aspirin to put a counter on the Oran Reef Ooze. That way everyone gets a counter on the Ooze attacks. So they might double block Scourge here, but that's fine. And if they just jump and take four. Alright, opponent takes eight, down to six. So they're setting up something big. It's gonna be Bastion of Remembrance to start draining us before they start jumping. Makes sense. Sparring Regimen, not a bad draw though. We've got options. Don't have double green for Henge, unfortunately. But Sparring Regiment seems like a fine play. Opponent seems to be holding a Village Rights. And then learn Containment Breach again, I think. Counter on the Ooze. And then where do we put the counter from Regiment? Probably just want to spread out our counters evenly. 
I guess I would not like to trade my Oran Refus if I can. And if they trade for Aspirant at this point, that's fine. Their opponent will get to Scry too, with the Voice Strider. Alright, they did not Scry. So Aspirin down. But we have three pretty sizable creatures. A way to destroy the Bastion. And if we draw a Forest, we can play a two mana Great Henge. Second Bastion. Alright. And hunt for specimens, making another 1-1. One, one. Another Sparring Regiment doesn't seem necessary. So I could either play a large Stone Coil or just destroy Bastion. Keep attacking. A Regiment put counter on Pupil, maybe. Opponents has to pretty much triple chump. Ooh, it's gonna be a Demogoth. Do they have the two mana Tenth of Pests? Yeah. So that's gonna make an army of. 1-1 one, one tokens now. So what do we get rid of? Another Scourge, perhaps? So a Trample's gonna be pretty key for us to win here, otherwise they can just drain us to death. So I would really like to play a big Stone Coil Serpents. I can learn to grab another answer for Bastion, I suppose. Yeah, that also works. Grab a Reduce to Memory. Do we have a better solution here? I don't think so. Could also grab Sciences to grab a Forest, but that's going to take a while. And then question is if we still want to attack here or not. Opponent could drain me down to 10, have 4 tokens left. Might still be worth it to attack. Maybe should have uh, untapped the pupil as well to have two creatures on defense. All right. Opponent looking through their graveyard. So they might have a way to reanimate something here. Or they're just gonna escape the Ghost Rider. Another hunt for specimens. Well, at least we can answer Bastion here. So yeah, I did end up taking one more damage than I should have, perhaps, if I had untapped Pupil. Well, still no green mana means we're just going to have to reduce the Bastion. And then see what happens. Put in mind sack a bunch of tokens here to drain us first. Alright, so I can attack with two creatures, no problem. Since we'll get to untap both of them. So, I guess Scourge and Ooze make sense. Let's 
So our opponent's looking for another Bastion. We've answered two so far. Uh oh, if they kept the card on top, can be good for me. Yeah, also getting access to the life gain from Great Henge would be very nice. It's gonna be Demogoth into some more pests. Still no green. So time for Stone Coil, I guess. Could also try and go wide here, which might not be a bad idea. Play Pupil, Shambler, Serpents for one. Would be nice to play those after we have a Great Engine play though. So we're at five. Let's say we have four blockers. Could still die to another Bastion, but yeah, I think 3 3 Stone Coil might be the play. Protection from Multicolor also useful against the Woe Eater. And then two creatures get to attack. Let's say Scourge and Pupil this time. That way if the Pupil dies we can move all the counters to Serpents. And discard Shambler. Can they find another Bastion? Another Woe Eater. Alright. There's a double green. At long last. And the protection from Multicolor on Serpent also applies to the Pest Tokens here. Alright, so can attack with, let's say, Stone Coil, Ooze, Scourge. Does a Pupil attack as well? Yeah, sure, why not? I guess I need both counters on Serpents if I don't want it to trade for Woe Strider. So just triple chumps with the pests. And a ooh, Liliana standard bearer to draw a bunch of cards here. Could be problematic. Discard land. So your opponent's got a full grip now. So another Bastion's gonna be difficult to beat at this point. Deadly Brew, I have to sacrifice a creature. Well, I'm kind of into sacking Pupil to put all my counters on Serpents. Although they might have removal for Serpents. Opponent gets back their Fiend Artisan. Another Pest Summoning, that's fine. Alright, so play out my land. And then go to Combots. And who do we attack with? We're at 7, can go up to 9 thanks to Henge. Shambler can potentially untap and then can still activate it with the regimen. And then Serpents definitely wants to get in there. And does the Ooze attack, perhaps? Something like this. And then untap Shambler, untap Serpents.
That works. Village shrines to draw to. And hopefully next turn Stone Coil can end the game for us. So not as good as Gnarlet Colony would have been with a Wild Wild Scourge in play, but still doing some good work here. Protection from Multicolored also relevant in the matchup. So we'll see what the Fiend Artisan can shoot her up. X equals four, so another large Demogoth maybe. It's gonna be Ayara. Alright, drains us. Another voice rider. Let me gain some life and response here. And our opponent concedes, they're dead to the serpent next turn. So yeah, very grindy game. We were lucky to have the answers for Bastion. And then once we deployed our trampling creature, we were able to get past the one ones on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Kick things off with a star pupil. And then turn two Mentor, turn three Serpent, facing a red-white deck. We'll hit for one. Sparring Regimen, also a nice draw. There is a Merchant, so this might be the Dragon's Approach deck as we see it here. At least we should be able to get our creatures above for toughness to survive. Storm's Wrath. So let's see. This turn, go for Sparring Regimen. And put the counters on Mentor itself. And what do we learn? I could learn Probation. Could just go for sciences to make sure I keep hitting my land drops. Since we have Blizzard Brawl as removal, so we're not going to need another one. So between probation and sciences, we'll go with sciences. And then next turn we can get this out of Storm's Wrath range. Cathartic discarding double approach. And we can even play a large Stonecoil Serpent, which will be able to block Velomachus and has protection from multicolored, so it's kind of the perfect answer here. It's going to be a 5 5 thanks to Mentor. And then the Mentor will put another two counters on itself. So I don't think they can beat this start unless they have some sweepers other than Storm's Wrath. And yeah, our opponent explodes, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Aspirants into Ooze into Regimen. This deck plays some individually powerful cards that also happen to synergize nicely, which is always a good recipe for a deck. Ooh, Conclave Mentor too. I think I'm still leading with Aspirant. And Dina, Soul Steeper. Alright, we'll uh, play the Ooze here and I think put another counter on Aspirants. If we draw land, we can maybe double two drop. If not, we can play a regimen. All right, did pick up the land. So play mentor, play aspirants. And this is going to be a massacre as our opponent already concedes. We get essentially four counters from aspirant. And then when the ooze attacks, we get to distribute a bunch more counters. So not much our opponent could do here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and 
yeah, the sand seems keepable, even though we don't have any white mana, we also don't have any white spells, and we can curve Scourge into Oran Reef Ooze. We've got a Blizzard Brawl with three Snowlands and Great Henge. Usually not a bad combo with our Scourge. The Ooze will put a counter on itself to grow the Scourge as well. Second Forest into Cram Session. And Graham's Environmental Sciences. Alright, we found white mana. Still probably no reason to show it to them. Hit for two. And yeah, the opponent's gonna need an answer for Ooze here, otherwise things are gonna get out of hand very quickly. Can even play our Star Pupil pre-combat to grow Scourge. Just to cultivate, so our opponent's ramping. Gets Plains and Mountains, so there could be a Sweeper incoming, which is bad news for me. So if I attack, then I'll be able to play Henge, second main. I guess we're still going to be one short, since we'll have a 4-4 four, four Scourge, giving this a 4 mana discount. So that's still going to cost us 5 total. So might as well play the Pupil first to grow the Scourge by 1. And pass a turn. And then next turn play Hench, hopefully. Opponent runs out planes, sciences for more fixing. Gets a snow covered swamp. So, some sort of five color deck. See Pugilist, which we can easily take out. So, yeah, we're looking good. Can play Hench, play Shambler pre combots. And we can still punch with a Blizzard Brawl. And that should do it. Attack. And we've got more than 15 damage. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Sadly, no white mana. Although, can I still keep this? We can curve Shambler into Scourge into Serpent. And if we find white mana along the way, our hand gets quite a bit better. I'll try it. The mana base is definitely one of the potential issues with this deck that might be holding it back, since we're an aggressive two-color deck with only one dual land. Although we don't have any double white or double green cards we need to play early. Alright, opponent on a mill deck, and white mana is a nice draw indeed. So, probably go for Aspirant before Mentor. And then next turn, Mentor will have immediate impact. I can also activate the Shambler with my one remaining mana. Does that mean I put counter on Shambler or Aspirant? I guess... Aspirant... Since I'm not planning to attack with Shambler next turn. Or we could go Mentor into Serpent for one. Maddening Cacophony mills for 8. Another Aspirant. So we'll play Mentor. Counter on itself. And attack for 4. Might as well activate Shambler now, in case they have a bounce spell for Mentor. Alright, so now the Shambler can start attacking. Field of Rune doesn't have any targets at least, and a Teferi's Tutelage. So Sparring Regimen could help us find an answer out of the sideboard, otherwise we just have to race and try and kill the opponent as quickly as possible. Alright, so we'll go with Aspirant plus Serpent. And then we want to spread out the wealth a little bit. One counter on Mentor, and another on Shambler. Bonus at three. Might as well run out Stone Coil. So our opponent needs to kill us this turn. Still have 
about half our library remaining, so I like my chances. And our opponent explodes. So yeah, the mill matchups not terrible since we usually present a fast clock. So the mono blue versions at least we can usually outrace. If they have a second color for sweepers and removal, of course things get a lot more complicated. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine hand, missing a one drop, but double conclave mentor should make up for it. Opponent blue green and a turn one goose, so might be a mutate deck. And then next turn we might go for regimen before playing another mentor out. Alright, Brazen Borrower bounces Mentor. Now I'm less interested in playing Regimen. So probably just replay Mentor and then next turn I can go Mentor plus Scourge for one. Which is still mana efficient. Opponent passes with three mana up. Well, let's see if they have a response here. Then do I attack? Do I fear any flash creature here? Not really. Might be Brazen Borrower end of turn, that's fine. So next turn I can Regimen plus Blizzard Brawl perhaps. Stone Quill for three. Alright, a lot of options. If I play Aspirant, I can essentially put three counters on Scourge, making it a 6-6, six, six, so that gives us a three mana discount on Henge. Still not quite enough to play it this turn, so instead I'm liking Regimen plus Blizzard Brawl. And then what do we learn for? Ooh, Lofty Denial. Was not expecting that one. Alright, a little brawl, scourge, and stone cold then. Bone is at 10. And then next turn we can try to play our aspirant. Snakeskin Veil on Borrower. Interesting. Times two. Pretty unusual play. Another Blizzard Brawl. Let's see if this bait sound a response. It doesn't. Alright, not sure what the opponent was up to. Maybe this is an exponential growth deck that tries to kill us with a flyer that's getting pumped, which would explain the snakeskin veil as well. We're on the play with a fine opening hand. Might go turn one pupil, turn two stone coil for two into regimen. Although if we pick up any other two drops we might take a different approach. Alright, Ooze looking good. So I might play the Ooze before Regimen, just to get the ball rolling. Black Green, Apprentice, so another Sacrifice deck, so they're out in full force today. But they can block my Stone Cold Serpents. And then the Ooze can put Counter on Pupil. Since Regiment will put a counter on the Ooze. So best I can do is trade for Pupil. Such more Witch could be a problem if they have it since we don't have removal at the ready. But we can learn for an answer I suppose. It's gonna be Bastion. That's fine. 
Ooh, and a great hench too. So, get to play a regimen. Learn for containment breach again. Attack. Putting regiment counter on ooze. Opponent doesn't have any good blocks. And I can play another pupil. And then next turn there's a good chance I can play... Alright, opponent does go for the double block. It means I can put more counters on Serpent. And yeah, next turn we can easily play Henge into Containment Breach, assuming Stone Cold's still alive. Ooh, Toski. 1-1 one, one Indestructible. Can still trample over it. We'll send the team and put more counters on Stone Coil. And yeah, that's 10 damage coming across. So even though we don't have Gnarled Colony, Stone Coil Serpent does a lot of heavy lifting in the Black Green Sacrifice matchup. And as we've seen, Sparring Regimen getting Containment Breach is also a common play pattern. So overall, it's not as bad of a matchup as it might appear at first glance, since our game plan is just to build up some big creatures, which doesn't always line up against the deck, making 1-1s one -one that plans to chum block and sacrifice them. So yeah, overall, green-white plus one counter aggro, not a bad choice in the current standard, and some of the new additions make it a lot more competitive than it was before. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.